people get back in the pen and stay there for the next <laughs> isn't this fun <laughs> anybody out there want to be a radio announcer and be the engineer and the button pusher and everything else at the same time no no when the sheep go they want music yeah that's right well they want to march to the music right <laughs> Well, anyway, get back in your pen and stay there for the next hour and listen carefully. Those of you who are real people, are awake, really know what's going on, you might want to listen too, just to brush up on some of your knowledge that you already have. Uh, first, I'll give you the only commercial you're going to hear this hour. It's a quote from uh, Alan Greenspan, chairman of the Federal Reserve Board. After you hear this, call our sponsor, Swiss America Trading, and take the appropriate steps, folks. This is a man testifying to Congress, and here's what he says. Alan Greenspan, Chairman, Federal Reserve Board, quote, Deficit spending is simply a scheme for the hidden confiscation of wealth. Gold stands in the way of this insidious process. It stands as a protector of property rights, unquote. 1-800-289-2646. 1-800-289-2646. Again, that's 1-800-289-2646. Call now. You know, you know, most of you are procrastinators. That's why you're in the trouble that you're in. Not only procrastinators, but ignorant, apathetic, and in some cases, absolutely stupid procrastinators. Some of you are real people, my kind of people. Don't forget, tomorrow is the last day in which to have your orders postmarked for our latest offers. The uh, garden seeds are going like popcorn. I had no idea this was going to be such a popular thing. Jubilee Sweet Corn, Blue Lake Snap Beans, Wando Garden Peas, Detroit Dark Red Beets, Copenhagen Market Cabbage, Hale's Best Cantaloupe, Red Cord Chantonay Carrots, Cucumber, Armenian Cucumber, Black Seeded Simpson Lettuce, Sweet Spanish Onion, Jupiter Bell Pepper, Butternut Winter Squash, Zucchini Summer Squash, Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach, Rutgers Tomato, Rob Broccoli, Sugar Baby Watermelon. Uh, these are all packed in uh, nitrogen uh, in enamel cans, nitrogen packed. Uh, they will plant a garden plot 65 feet by 124 feet, which is an awful lot of food. Sorry, folks. Had a little girl and a dog running rampant there. <laughs> and uh, was so distracting I had to do something about it. So, okay. The other offer we have that must be postmarked by tomorrow is the security unit will feed two adults for one year or one adult for two years. It consists of 19 cases of number 10 cans and some two and a half cans, number two and a half cans. Shipping weight is 575 pounds. 
Retail price is $1,413. For the listeners of the hour of the time, it's $1,113. That's uh, $300 discount to the listeners of this program. If you can buy it cheaper, good luck. Do it. Uh, for CADGI members, it's $1,000 even. Folks, remember, you must have your order postmarked by tomorrow. Now, I also want to tell you that we've been really busy around here. We're doing a lot of things. The newspaper is on its way out. They're going out to uh, the subscribers and members of CADGI. Also, we have leased a large building in St. John's, Arizona. We are going to open a research center. And sometime this year, we will have a CADGI convention at that location. Uh, it'll be rock bottom prices for rooms and for the convention for CADGI members. Anybody else that wants to come, is going to play the premium rate. But I guarantee you, it's going to be the best convention that you've ever attended. We don't want you to bring your real names or your real cars or your real license plates. We recommend that you fly into either Phoenix or Flagstaff or Tucson or Albuquerque, rent a car and drive. Make sure that your license plates get splattered in mud along the way. When you get here, you can introduce yourself as anybody you want to be. CADGI members, to get your rates, will use your CADGI numbers. No names, please. We're not... Bobo Grits, folks. Now, tonight I want you to pay attention. You're going to hear a videotape of a film. It's a training film for junior officers in the United States Army. It's an old film. The officers that were being addressed in this film are probably now senior officers, and within a short period of time, they will be the Joint Chiefs of Staff. It is a United States Army Delta Force Lieutenant Colonel who is conducting this briefing. It is full of New Age symbolism. It is full of the symbolism of the secret societies and the order of the quest. All through the videotape are the scenes of the rising sun, the music and the words to the music, the lyrics talk about the sun with the sun in your eyes. Uh, this, folks, is right out of the secret societies that are in control of the highest echelons of the United States government, the United States military forces, and even your own state and city governments. So pay attention. Those of you who have been doubting what you've been hearing on this program, you listen carefully to this tape. I don't know if we can finish this tape tonight. We're going to try. If we don't, we will finish it tomorrow. So get your notebooks and your pen ready. And make sure that you take copious notes, that you listen carefully, and that you understand what you're hearing. Those of you who have been with us all through the series on the mystery schools will understand readily. Some of you will struggle with this. Uh, if you could see the visual pictures in this film, you would be amazed. Obelisks, the sun, the sphinx, all of the symbols of the mysteries. The 1st Earth Battalion is the Army's place to dream. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Jim Shannon, Earth 6, and I'd like to invite you to join a growing network of Army officers and others that are daring to think the unthinkable. Come join the quest. Yeah. 
General Shaimai recently said, There is no fulfillment in leading American soldiers into combat while a nation still debates its own conscience. Unsure of its goals and unclear about its priorities. He also said, in the longer term, the successful future of our volunteer force must rest on an expanded national spirit within which the Army service is viewed as a meaningful and productive endeavor. The First Earth Battalion is a story of some officers who went in search of that expanded national spirit the Chief spoke about and looked for some new ways for the Army to be productive. And to their surprise and delight, they found both in a growing conspiracy just under the surface of tomorrow. The Army today performs without applause. Our country also is suffering from a missing sense of purpose. If you talk to any interested foreigners, they seem to be saying, What are you waiting for, America? Lead us out of this mess. You have the system, you have the resources, and you have the historical mandate. Of course we can sit around and wait for somebody to break the cycles of war. Or we can reach into the future. Other responsible forces on the planet are reaching out. The Army must take its share of the response. of folks who have faith that we're about to break through some fixed ways of thinking and some traditional ways of knowing to discover that we all must share the room and the resources as they exist on this spaceship Earth. All people together A planet for peace With love as a motive, there can be no defeat. It's so easy to come alive with the sun in your eyes. Wake up. Wake up. Love has never been organized in the world the way hate has, and it seems this century has been the best proof of that. The officers wondered what would happen if we organized to promote peace, not to prevent war, if we became proactive instead of reactive, a real ethical evolution. They wondered what would happen if force, as a concept, no longer carried with it required destruction known of armies, but rather projected its power in terms of the spirit, 
in terms of the will, and in terms of the heart. Our people together, Ooh, a planet for peace, with love as a motive, there can be no defeat. You know it's easy to stay alive with the sun in your eyes. Wake up. Wake up. Let it be there to go alive with the sun in your eyes. Well, folks, as soon, as soon as somebody heard me say the words Delta Force, the most incredible jamming started. This is not propagation. This is jamming. Tomorrow, you must call the FCC. Call all your representatives and senators. Call everybody that you can think of and demand that they stop jamming WWCR. Now, if you don't do this, it's going to continue every time we hit on touchy subjects. You see, they got operatives out here as a part of Project Trojan Horse, trying to gather names and addresses of patriots who will oppose the destruction of this country through the force of arms and reestablish the Constitution as the supreme law of the land with the law on our side. That's why this jamming is occurring. So, instead of continuing to try to cut through this soup, and it is soup, folks, those of you out there who may be ham operators who have radio direction finders, if you could home in on the source of that jamming and please give us your location and a bearing from that point, if we can get bearings from across the country, we can pinpoint the transmitters that are doing this. So, my advice to you stinking, rotten, socialist, traitor scumbags who are jamming this broadcast, we're going to find you, and if we do, we're going to prosecute you. So, folks, all of you who can hear this through this soup tomorrow, begin calling the FCC and don't stop. Call all day. Call all of your representatives and all of your senators and insist that they find the source of the jamming of WWCR. You see, if you turn your dial just three points either way off of 5.810, it disappears. It's not propagation, folks. It is intentional jamming. So, those of you who have radio direction finders, we would appreciate it if you would begin now and find a... Radio compass bearing on the source of the jamming. Please send that information to us. I am very, very good with charts and plotting bearings, and we will find them. So let's open the phones for those of you who can hear, if anybody out there can hear anything. Uh, Carolyn, could you disconnect the facts, please? And... Uh, We'll take calls for the rest of the hour. And what we're going to do is make this tape available, folks. You notice that the source of jamming has just stopped. Isn't that wonderful? You see, these creepo socialist coward traitors know that they're going to get caught if they continue. And you mark my words. You are traitors, and we will catch you. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. Hello. Uh, this is Jack uh, from Prescott, Arizona. Hi, Jack. Uh, Bill, uh, uh, first of all, I'm not getting uh, much bad reception over here tonight, that is. Well, we are here. So. A lot of times, though, there does seem to be a very obvious jamming. Oh, yeah. There is tonight. You noticed as soon as I put out that word, it stopped. <laughs> well, I guess... Uh, 
you know, if you think that's a uh, government... Uh, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Whoever it is, it's they're right. stinking, dirty, rotten, coward traitors. Sure. If they have something to say, they should buy the airtime and say it. Sure. They have no right interfering with the freedom of speech of anybody else in this country, and I won't stand for it. We will get radio direction bearings on these stinking communist traitors, and we will track them down, and we will prosecute them. And I'll rip their damn transmitter apart with my bare hands. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you're successful at it. You know, Bill, uh, I have a question concerning those uh, three magnificent tapes uh, last week on Monday, Tuesday, and uh, Wednesday uh -huh. on the, uh, the Nazi influence. Uh, I'm curious if that, if that was a BBC production and if it was originally intended for uh, radio or TV. Are you the guy that wrote me that letter? No, I haven't written any letters. Uh, no. well, somebody wrote a letter uh, claiming that this was a BBC uh, production. I, I heard that, but uh, I didn't get, I didn't get, if I wasn't clear if, if it no. actually was or wasn't. No, it was not a BBC production. Oh, is, it, uh, is it something that you put together yourself? or? No, no, but it's something that other people have researched and put together. Uh, that confirms uh, what I had researched years before and wrote about in my book, in fact, uh, before I ever even knew that this tape existed. It certainly, it certainly did that. Is it, is it relatively new, or does it go back some time? I have no idea. I never heard of it until uh, about a month ago. Oh, is that right? And uh, found it. We played it. It, it uh, agreed with what I had already discovered in my own research and had written about uh, for years and had talked about for years. And uh, so uh, we thought the world had better learn that somebody besides me has discovered this scam. Yeah, well, I, uh, after the first night, I broke out the recorder and recorded it because I thought it was uh, indispensable. Absolutely indispensable. Well, that's about it, Bill. Uh, good luck to you and God bless you, Bill. Thank you. And God bless you, too. Bye-bye. You see, folks, you see how easy it is to make the little cowards crawl back into their holes? You see how instantly the jamming stopped once we asked our people out there to start gathering bearings with radio direction finding equipment? And believe me, a lot of people listening to this broadcast are ham radio operators and have exactly that equipment. And we're going to start doing this every time you hear jamming. I don't care if they're jamming Tom Valentine or me or somebody else, folks. We're going to fight these suckers. I'd like to say something else, but I can't. We're going to fight these suckers, these cowardly little socialist creeps. And if we have to, we'll go out and rip their towers down, tear their transmitters apart with our bare hands if the government won't do anything. And I'll press charges against anyone that we find jamming this broadcast. I guarantee it. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Hi. Uh, listen, on, on this end in Albuquerque, the, the jamming or whatever it was stopped not shortly after you cut off that um, video you were playing, but instantly. I mean, it seemed like it was connected with it, because just the instant you stopped it and cut in, there was no, that clear no, right up. it's not connected with the video, and it continued after I cut off the video, and it didn't stop until I asked people to begin uh, trying to locate the source of jamming with the radio direction finding equipment. Okay. We're going to find these creeps. Well, I hope you do. Oh, we're going to do it. Anything I hate is a coward. And these people are cowards. You want to debate me? You call me up. I'll bring you in here and put you right on that microphone right there, and you can bait, debate me all night, you little cowards. You haven't got the guts to do it. You haven't got the facts, and you don't know anything but lies. And that's why you're jamming instead of buying airtime and broadcasting your so-called truth. That's a laugh. Okay, Bill. I, I wasn't talking to you, by I, the way. I know. I know. I hate cowards. I, I hate them. I mean. I'd chop them into pieces and feed them to the worms. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Any of you cowards out there got the guts to debate me on the air? Huh? Just give me a call. I'll arrange it. I'll ensure your safety, and I'll debate you fact for fact, you stinking, rotten, lying cowards. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Cooper. Um... A lot of your uh, problems are coming from a station WEWN on 5.825. Uh, a lot of times at night up here in New England, I catch Czechoslovakian. Uh, no, that's only if you have an analog tuning radio. It, it is uh, digital. Um, Yours is digital PLL synthesized tuning? Yes, it is. 
uh, Radio Shack um, DX440. Hmm. You're talking about the Radio Shack one night. And you're locking it in on the on the frequency? It's it's locked in on 5.810. I listen to you every night. And, uh, you're the only one with digital synthesized tuning that's ever reported that problem. Exactly. Um, some nights when the weather is kind of bad, I notice um, I'm <clears throat> I notice I can hear that a little bit. Well, if I move up the dial to 5.812 or 5.813, I'll I'll hear it as clear as a bell. Yeah, but Latin that, mass and Czechoslovakian. That's a that's a license station, and if you have digital tuning and you're, there's nothing wrong with your radio, uh, you shouldn't be having any in interference at all. You're the first one that's ever reported interference on a PLL digital synthesized uh, tuning radio. Well, I think what I'm going to have to do is get an exterior antenna. Yeah, that always helps. But I would have your radio checked, too, because if you're locked on that one frequency, you should not be getting anything from WETN or whatever the call sign is from Birmingham, Alabama. Is that That's correct? the one, sir. Yeah, you should not even be hearing that. Okay. And the source of jamming tonight was not from them. Okay, advice well taken. From stinking, some stinking uh, little socialist prick coward. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you, Mr. Cooper. And you watch. He won't have the balls to call and debate me. How much you want to bet? I'm taking bets on that, folks. I'll bet you anything the stinking coward that was jamming this broadcast or the stinking cowards, which probably it is, haven't got the balls to debate me on the air. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. This is Randy in Chicago. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for the jamming. Can I uh, give a uh, number that I've had many uh, uh, good luck with? With the, It's the FCC monitoring station in Grand Island, Nebraska. They have a teletype link to uh, numerous other monitoring stations in their network, and uh, I've, I've called this number and, uh, and gotten a, a, a technician that sits in front of a receiver. Uh, they man that 24 hours a day, and uh, they've actually tuned into uh, erroneous uh, transmissions that I've had to deal with in the past and uh, actually analyzed it, and they put in a written report right there for you. Can I give you that number? Sure. Do you write it down, uh, Carol? It's, it's the FCC monitoring station in Grand Island, Nebraska. If, uh, you can call it now. It's uh, area code 308. What I want you to do is I want all you listeners to call it. You see, I can hear myself. Oh, what I, what I, what <laughs> I meant was you. I meant whoever's listening. Okay, good. Okay, 308-382-4296. And uh, if they have a, a, a problem with that number, they can call directory assistance in 308. Great. Uh, that was the... The number that I had here, uh, it could be the, that, it, that they've changed it, or maybe they've got two or three numbers. Yeah. But they have a, a, a fax or teletype to, uh, uh, you know, a, a network established uh, during World War II to find, uh, you know, Nazi stations or whatever. Yeah. Well, these aren't Nazis. These are Freemason pukes. <laughs> anyway, uh, I had another comment on that that last caller. Uh, his uh, his radio. Uh, I have a Drake uh, R8 here. It's a radio. Uh, made uh, by R.L. Drake Company out of Ohio. Yeah, it's the last American radio made. Yep, and uh, it's quite expensive, but uh, I have a feeling that he's getting a, a, a strong, strong signal there from that other station, uh, probably a mix between a strong station here, uh, you know, the WWCR and the other station, and uh, he's just getting a, a, a mix there with his radio. There, there isn't any uh, WEWN uh, interfering with you, and that, that'd be too far away. No, no, that's not true. We get reports all the time. There's a Catholic broadcasting station, which, by the way, is a part of the mysteries. Yeah. Uh, the Vatican is the heart and soul. And uh, uh, they broadcast. Where, you see, they were broadcasting within uh, 10 uh, megahertz of uh, 7435 when I was there. Right, that's correct. As soon as I moved to 5.810, yeah. they moved within 10 megahertz of 5.810. What's their frequency? Uh, I don't remember. Just go up and down from sure. my, from this frequency you're listening to, and you'll find it within 10 megahertz of us. They followed us right here, and uh, they broadcast uh, over 20 megahertz, and they're not supposed to. That's illegal. So everybody, when they hear that station blocking over another one, you should report it to the FCC and demand oh, yeah. that they clean up their signal. Call, call that guy right there in Grand Island right now, and, uh, and, and he'll listen to it and make out a report. I've had this... Uh, I, I'm also a ham operator, and I've had problems where other hams have uh, come on and jammed me, you know, other hams. Uh -huh. And uh, and I've called up uh, the FCC, and they've, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, dealt with it right there. Uh, I have a 300-foot long wire here with a, uh, 
antenna tuner, so uh, you know I've got a, a, a good uh, resonant antenna. Uh, I've been a listener now for 15 years. But anyway, uh, that'd be the case on that number, and uh, you know maybe they uh, cut cut the guy back. It's just been five years since I called him, but uh, uh, I've always had good results, and the guy is even friendly. Uh, one time I caught him on the on the pot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, thank thanks, you. Thanks for the uh, for the help. Yeah. What is that number, Carolyn? You want to read that over the air? Anytime you hear jamming, call this number. Those of you with radio, radio direction finders, uh, uh, get a bearing and send us your location exactly and the bearing from your location. We'll track these scum sucking pigs down. Uh, Grand Island, Nebraska, 308-382-4296. That's 308-382-4296. Nine six, or call three zero eight and ask for directory assistance to Grand Island, Nebraska. Thank you, Carolyn. Now tomorrow night I'm going to have radio direction finding equipment out here. We're going to start this tape again. I want everybody out there listening who has radio direction finding equipment. The minute any jamming starts of this broadcast, take your location and get a, a bearing on the location of the jamming. We will plot it out here if you will either call in or write in the information, and we'll take care of it. Then it is. It's not scrambled. It's being jammed. Well, Don't jammed. you know the difference? Right. Same thing. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say for people to get out there and let's stop the jamming? Okay, well, you're also telling a lot of people that, that you're, you're also saying this. Okay, we're going to stand up for what we believe is right, but we're going to die in the process. That's exactly right. And if you don't have anything worth dying for, then you don't have anything worth living for. Oh, I, I knew, I knew what you were when you started off on your tangent, trying to make me think that you understood what you were talking about and you don't understand anything. You can't be free unless you're willing to die for freedom. And that's the truth. That's why so many men in the history of this country have died for freedom. And that's the only reason we've been free is because they have been prepared, willing, and ready to die. And if it had not been for them, you'd have been somebody's slave a long time ago. Or, mister, you never would have been born. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, yeah, Bill Cooper? Yes. Yeah, I'm calling from Michigan, and they're jamming up here. Which I can't hear nothing but nothing. Well... We got everybody working out there. Okay, good. When is this uh, meeting that you were talking about in uh, Arizona? Well, uh, we haven't decided on a date yet, but it'll be sometime later this year. Okay, I'm the one that requested a copy of that tape. Which tape? I get requests from hundreds of people for tapes. Oh, uh, this was uh, <laughs> the 24th of February show. I I still don't know what you're talking about. We you know how much mail we get every day? No. Thousands of pieces of mail. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you've got uh, I'm glad a lot of people are so woke up then. For, for me to, uh, well, they're not necessarily woke up. They're in the process of learning. I but, uh, sure hope so. For me to understand who you are from the description that you ordered that tape is oh. what I'm trying to tell you. is impossible. I, there's no way I could know who you are. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I just want to let you know, and who, who should I call? Just the, um... Uh, the FCC? FCC, yes, and call your representatives and your senators. Okay. And if you have a radio direction finder, get to work. Okay. Thank you. All right. 602-333-2174. Yeah, folks, there's no jamming whatsoever. The little cowards quit as soon as we started out on their trail. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill Cooper. Uh, Joe from Phoenix. You know, I... I just fell out of my chair about two hours ago. Uh, uh, Tom Valentine admitted he was a member of the Snell Group on his program, uh, the first thing he said uh, this evening. Yeah, what have I been telling you all this time? <laughs> <laughs> so you did it, and uh, I, I thought it was great. Um, one of the things that came across, uh, um, I was thinking about the, your, your uh, station and the way you uh, bring about your message, could it be that the United States government, uh, now I'm talking about gun control, so I'll switch subjects. Uh, could it be that the United States government is, in fact, uh, causing the crime and, and uh, drugs uh, across our country uh, in order to get us to uh, get rid of our guns? That's what I've been telling people since I've been talking to people for many years. That's what I wrote in my book, and that's been my message on this broadcast. 
dialectic. It's, uh, it's the Hegelian dialectic. Yeah, they, they want total control. They have to create the situation that will make the sheeple scream for total control. Right, yeah. Uh, it, it, it seems that once they get rid of our gods, well, we don't have any way of defending the Constitution from destruction by the New World Order. And uh, it, it just and also I'm hearing on, on the regular news media uh, that uh, uh, the one world government of the New World Order sure is nice. You know, like it, it uh, protects us from war. Sure it does. Uh-huh. <laughs> How many wars are going on right now around the world? Well, it, I think they've always been, at least the last 200 years, all of them been caused by the New World Order. As long as there's men on this earth, there's going to be wars until we quit, quit following these scumbags that call themselves leaders. People just want to live their lives in peace and be happy. We don't need all this stuff. We don't need these big governments, and we don't need these leaders. And we should never let the power out of our hands. I agree. Well, thank you for your, your efforts, Bill. You're doing a good job. Thank you very much. Bye. Sometimes I don't know, <laughs> but, but I'm trying. Uh, I mean it, folks. I want to track down the source of this jamming. I want to get these suckers, and I want to stick it to them. They're cowards. They're miserable little socialist puke cowards. And uh, I'll bet you anything that everyone we find will be a Freemason or uh, uh, one of the associated branches of the Illumined Ones, or the Illuminati. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello, Bill, this is Jeffrey from New Orleans. Hi, Jeffrey. Hi, I was listening to the show when, they, when you cut the tape off. Was the jamming consisting of the guitar music that was going over the soundbite? No, that's part of the tape. That's uh -huh. part of the tape, because I was able to hear it very clearly down here, and then after you talked about the jamming, that's when I began to hear droplets of water and then an electric motor cutting over the station. But I did not hear jamming during the tape itself except one time when the tape suddenly cut off and then came back on. Well, there was heavy jamming. Jamming's only effective in certain directions uh, uh, in certain parts of the country depending upon uh, what part of the country they want to jam. I got a feeling that they don't want anybody in the state of Utah to hear what I'm saying. Oh, well, you see, we didn't get that down here until after the uh, the situation occurred, and then I got to hear the droplets of water and then the electric motor going on. Yeah, well, there's absolutely no jamming at this time, at this location, and previous to my appeal for people to use radio direction finders to find and locate the source of the jamming, you couldn't even hear anything but a loud uh, squeal, uh, not only on this frequency, but on the three adjacent frequencies on each side and on the upper and lower side bands. Well, apparently it was a directional jam because we didn't get it down here. Well, you will eventually. Uh, I probably will, but I do want to point out one other thing tonight. On the Arts and Entertainment Network, they have a series called In Search Of, and tonight they had a replay of a show done in 1977 about the witches of Salem, Massachusetts, and in their ceremonies on June 21st, the witches were using the response, so mote it be. Yeah. Those guys who use the mystery schools, you know that those witches are part of that mystery Babylon bunch. Absolutely. Possibly maybe part of the Masons. Absolutely. And that's what, that's what I wanted to report in. As I said, we did not get the jamming during your playing of the thing. I wish you would play it again tomorrow night in full so that maybe I could find out what's going on. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to play it again tomorrow night, and I'm going to have a radio direction finder team here, and uh, we're going to ask everybody out there listening, if they have a radio direction finder, to uh, mark their exact location on a map and uh, get the uh, radio direction uh, bearing on uh, any source of jamming that's jamming this program. And we should do it on every program. You know, I don't agree with a lot of other people who broadcast, but I am probably the greatest supporter of free speech. If someone wanted to get up, I don't care what they want to say, I will support their right to do it. That's why I'm a supporter of yours. So I'll be taping it tomorrow night and see if there is jamming. And if there is, then I'll report it to the FCC in one day. Great. Good enough. Thank you. See, folks, it's not hard. <laughs> so mote it be. Yes, that's right out of the oath and the initiation ceremony of the Royal Arc degree of Freemasonry. Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah, this is uh, Tim and Frederick Merlin, who had the problem picking you up before with my little analog set up. Hi, Tim. How are you getting me now? You're nice and clear tonight. You're clear as a bell. The only thing I heard was something that sounded like somebody dead can. 
which is very similar to when you shut down transmission when your little girl was chasing the pup. So they must be blowing that thing to the west or something along that line. They're not yeah. blowing it east, 50 miles east of me, and you're in the Chesapeake Bay. I think they're blowing, blowing it through the Pioneer Corridor, if you know what I'm talking about. Ah, uh, no, I don't know that. Well, the, that's what that's a code word for the for the Mormons who uh, uh, went up into uh, Utah and established the uh, temple at Salt Lake City. And all these little cities and little towns that they established along the way, there's a pioneer statue. Ah, okay. But in any case, it's not blowing to the east, that's for sure, because my little radio wouldn't have picked up anything, and that's happened before. Although I have been, I have a sneaking suspicion, since I've got a filter set up on this and an outside antenna, uh, I have been able to filter it down to the point where I have bled, bled out the church music and bled out the Cubans and everything else. Wonderful. And, I'm, <laughs> and when I'm flat dead on frequency, uh, I start picking up like a, a, a signal, just some kind of beep, 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 but it's not Morse code. Yeah, okay. It's an oscillation of some sort. Okay, I think next week we'll do our show on shortwave radio listening and antennas and what kind of radios are best and all that kind of stuff. Okie dokie. In the meantime, we got to, let me tell you something, folks. One thing I learned in the military and one of the biggest lessons I learned in Vietnam, anybody who assumes a defensive position is not long in this world. So we must learn to identify the enemy and attack the enemy and destroy the enemy or we're going to be the ones who are going to be destroyed. And if we don't find these people who are jamming and destroy them, and by destroy I mean prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law, then we're not going to have listeners out there. Simple as that. And we can do it. Well, it just means your message is getting out. Yep. It sure Otherwise, it wouldn't be paying attention to you. Oh, we're hurting them bad. Our, our radio for Peace International wouldn't have their UN broadcasts uh, attacking this broadcast as they are. Well, indeed. Well, I'll let you get to your other listeners and uh, rock on. What can I tell you? Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 602-333-2174. Yeah, folks, we're going to have the full library set up in our new research center in St. John's, Arizona, a place where you'll be able to come if you're passing through this way or going to the Grand Canyon or if you're in Arizona or going to the Petrified Forest or any of these beautiful places out here. You can stop and conduct research in the library. You can stop by and see us. You can... Uh, put a videotape in the VCR and from our extensive uh, videotape library and uh, watch a videotape. Or you can talk to Carolyn and have a Coke. You can uh, sit there and be a live audience for our broadcasts and uh, maybe even get in on uh, a television documentary. We'll have a TV studio there, too. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Hello. Up here, this is Carl from Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, you have been jammed pretty good up here from where I'm coming from. Um, I just wanted to make one comment, really, about radios. Because I own a digital and an analog. And they're both realistic. One's real old. And one's, like, been one of the new um, three decimal digitals. Uh-huh. Some nights, uh, the analog will blow away the digital because you have more filtering and tuning um, capabilities with it. Only if you have a good one. Most of these people out no, here... Well, this is supposed to be a good one. Well, most of the people out there listening have these little cheapy radios that are analog tuning, and uh, they can't figure out why they can't listen to anything. Ra uh, shortwave radio, folks, by the, in case you didn't know it, is one time and one uh, function where you really do get what you pay for. What do you mean in that respect? I mean, if you buy a cheap oh, radio... Oh, okay. I, I was thinking of transmitters. All right, yeah. No. And no. everything, everything, the whole system. All right, okay. I know what you mean. Um, that's about all I wanted to say. Um, the digital's nice for... If you want to, like, take something, I mean, you, you can set it on the frequency you want to be on, it'll be on. You can't... You don't have that capability with the, with the analog. That's right. Because it'll drift. And if you're operating the analog, though, you, could, you can actually blow down the other one. Well, see, you're an experienced shortwave listener, and you might even be... Are you a ham operator? No, I'm just a ham, uh, what do they call it, listener, DXer. Okay, you're a DXer. Follow you're, my signals. You're experienced at listening to a shortwave radio. Most people aren't, and no, they have nobody to, to teach them. They they go down and buy a shortwave radio, they sit on the table, they turn it on, and uh, if it doesn't sound right, they have no idea what to do. They don't know about putting their hand on the antenna. 
or with their fingers circling the antenna, or just move their hand six inches away from the antenna, or touching a part of the radio, or following the drift of the signal with the tuning knob if they have an analog radio, or how to use the AMRF gain, or the tone, or the BFO, or the sideband to listen through static or jamming. They don't know all those things. Hey, you know what? You just remind me of something. You didn't know it either? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm like really thinking here. I just picked this up when I was at the drugstore for my parents. It was a SWL magazine. And they said, you just said it. If they said BFO pitch, all right? Mm -hmm. They said if you get a bad signal, this is right in one of their articles. They said turn it, turn on your radio on the, on the SSB, either low or high, whichever right. level combined, like mine's combined. And take, take that knob until you get a real low frequency noise until it almost disappears. That's right. And they say that could even be better. Well, sometimes it is, but you really need headphones when you do that. Oh, really? See, yeah. I haven't gotten that far yet. I haven't yeah. had much time to, like, rig up a whole headphone system I would uh, like. Most, most radios, the speakers aren't very good, I don't need, even if you have an expensive one. So I mean, I'm running this all through a big tube amp. I mean, yeah. I got everything done right. It's just I'm slowly learning and slowly getting everything perfect. If you have a good set of headphones, then uh, that will help you listen through the static. And uh, when you're using your RF gain and your BFO and your single sideband and all that stuff to cut through the, the soup, so to speak, uh, the headphones uh, really help help you do that. Okay, oh, that's good. Okay, I'm going to remember that. Okay, we're going to have a show next week on shortwave radio and how to listen. Uh, maybe I'll call somebody at, at uh, uh, what's the name of that company, Drake? Crane. Crane. We'll call somebody at Crane and see if we can't get them as a guest on the air. Because uh, as far as I can tell, from all the catalogs and everything that we've received and everything that we've read, they're probably your best bet. Okay, 602-333-2174. Probably get time for a few more short calls if you want to call and talk. Still waiting for one of you scumbag cowards to call and take me up on my offer to debate me on the air. I don't think any one of you have the guts. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, I'm calling from northern New Jersey. Hi. Uh, you are not jammed in northern New Jersey. I'm a ham operator, and I, I'm familiar with jamming. Well, good. Yeah, I think we are just jammed in the Pioneer Quarter. Okay, well, uh, I, I want to tell you a few things uh, that might be of interest to you. You were using the term megahertz before referring to how close a station can be to you, and you really meant kilohertz, KHZ. No, I meant megahertz. Well, you... 5.810. I'm talking about from going 5.810 to 5.850. That's megahertz, my friend. Yeah, uh, you're transmitting on 5.810 megahertz, which is the equivalent of 5810 kilohertz, or 5810. That's right. Kilohertz. The station, the Catholic station, with the endless mantra coming off of it, that does give you some trouble sometimes, is on 5825 kilohertz, or 5.825, and is therefore it's, it's only 15 kilohertz above your signal. Uh huh. That's. So the problem is that they're not 15 megahertz away, they're 15 kilohertz away. And that's why yeah. they're having the problem, because they're so strong. And uh, they're not actually doing anything wrong. What is happening at certain distances, for instance, last night, uh, more so than tonight, uh, here in New Jersey, uh, hearing the signal coming from Nashville, Tennessee, on 5810, uh, the strip gets so elongated uh, because of phenomena coming from the sun. Uh, the skip gets so elongated that we can hear Alabama better than we can hear something coming from a closer point, which in this case is Nashville. And uh, unfortunately, then, the Catholic station would be tinning the S meter where uh, WWCR would be barely coming through due to the unusual elongation of the skip. So I wouldn't say that they, the Catholic station was deliberately jamming. And by the way, when that occurred, I went down to my handset and dialed in 5810 in the sideband mode, and I could still copy uh -huh. very, very well because the selectivity of the ham or the ham transceiver is so much better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, although I'm using an R100 that I'm listening to you now on, and uh, the R100, as good as uh, a receiver as that is, uh -huh. uh, still is not as selective as an, an amateur transceiver in the sideband mode. Yeah. And also the phase lock loop uh, with digital tuning is not what will give you per se better selectivity than a receiver that has analog tuning. It, it all depends on the filtering. Well, well, now wait a minute. You're getting into expensive ham transceivers and radios. Right. 
Okay. I'm talking to people out there who have a 4995 okay. shortwave radio. Say, if they have a 4995 uh, digital job, if they can find one that cheap, or analog, either one of them is probably going to be susceptible to nearby strong adjacent channel interference. We haven't found that, and this Catholic station is intentionally broadcasting way out of their frequency. I can take my radio right here in Arizona and take it off of digital uh, tuning and uh, or use another radio that's an analog radio, and uh, uh, I won't be able to hear 5.810 either. Well, I would because the Catholic uh, station is broadcasting over it. They're not supposed to be broadcasting over that many. And they have a, wide, a very wide band, which could be in violation. In other words, wide band modulation. There's no doubt. They are in violation. Uh -huh. I, uh, I, I, I just about pulled my hair out. I don't have that much left. I <laughs> hearing that constant Maria, Maria, Maria uh, mantra in that monotone. Uh, they usually go in some other language, and Mary isn't going to hear your prayers anyhow. But uh, I guess I'm going to get the Catholics all after me. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's maddening trying to hear detailed, good information and then hear that mantra just over and over again uh, in that monotone voice. Uh, We're out of time, my friend. Okay. Well, you, by the way, uh, WWCR was caught, uh, that is, the government was caught jamming WWCR 7 megahertz. Do you realize that? Oh, I know that. Okay. It was, it was teletyped and it was traced to We have to go. We're out of time. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night, folks. God bless you all. Thank you.